Okay, so let's finish off uh, and find the forces now. So we have the stress in the concrete, that's 3.41 MPa. We have the stress cracking over now 3.29, and then the stress in the steel, 22.14. So the stress in the steel, 22.14. MPA. So if we take uh, forces now, we find the uh, force above the neutral axis in the concrete. That would be really this triangle times the width. So 3.41 MPA times 305.8 times a half because of the triangle times the uh, width of the section. So we'd have force in the concrete is equal to one half times three point four one MPA times three oh five point eight millimeters times uh, the width three hundred millimeters. That's 0 0.5 times 3.41, 305.8 times 300. So 156.4. And what I did was I, I already calculated it out, uh, and I just put it on the diagram, uh, the stress diagram. So it's 156.4 kilonewtons. And then the force in the uh, steel. Would be the area of the steel, the actual area of the steel, not the transformed area of the steel, because we want to use the real steel area and the real steel stresses. So the area of steel is 600 millimeters squared. Times the stress in the steel, 22.14. MPA. And when you multiply that out, it it comes out to 13.3 kilonewtons. So 13.3 um, kilonewtons. And sign convention will say compressive stress on the section is positive, and the steel is below the neutral axis, so it's in tension, so it's negative. And then uh, the last component would be the uh, concrete below the axis. Uh, that's just upon the verge of cracking for that 3.2 MPa stress. So the force uh, CR would be similar uh, to how we calculated the above force. It's a triangular area and the width is 300. So it would be one half times the cracking stress 3.29 MPa times the height of the triangle, 294.2 times the width, 300 millimeters. And that comes up to 145.2 kilonewtons, and it's uh, in tension, minus 145.2 kilonewtons. So now we can sum the moments up. Or sorry, uh, sum the sum the forces up, and we should get uh, a number very close to zero. One fifty six point four minus thirteen three minus one forty five two. That comes out to be uh, minus two point one kilonewtons, and it comes out to be very close to zero. Uh, not exactly zero, but. It's really a rounding error that created the 2.1. If we, if we carried all our significant digits, we'd have this bounce right up to zero. And now let's see if we can get this cracking moment. So that we did, uh, we used my over s to get the cracking moment previously. Now we're going to sum these forces about the neutral axis. So we're taking lever arms now. So if, if we multiply that force times uh, the distance from the centroid of this. Uh, stress distribution to the uh, neutral axis is going to be, for a triangle, two-thirds of the height. So it's two-thirds 
times 305.8 and uh, that will be this I have to work out the calculator 156.4 times 2 times 305.8 divided by 3 and then to put it into kilonewton meters divided by 1000 again because that's millimeters so that's 31.88 Newton meters. And the next uh, force was the uh, steel, 13.3. And we could find its distance to the neutral axis by taking the 550 minus 305.8 to give us this distance here. So that's uh, 550 minus. 305.8. So 13.3 times bracket 550 minus 305.8 divided by 1000 puts into kilonewton meters. That's a very small moment. About it comes out to be about uh, 3.25. Kilonewton meters. And then the uh, the force uh, due to the tensile concrete. And again, it's uh, two thirds. We take two thirds times the height. That's the distance from the centroid, where the force acts, the centroid of this uh, triangular section is two thirds of its height. So, two thirds times 294.2. One forty five point two times two times two ninety four point two divided by three. That's about um, I'm gonna say twenty eight point five kilonewton meters approximately. And then now we can sum these moments. All, all the uh, forces are acting counterclockwise. So they they all add they're all positive uh, moments. Then we uh, sum them. 31.88 plus 3.25 plus 28.5. 63.6 kilonewton meters. And it's very close to this. It should balance to exactly the cracked moment we got in the last case, but again, it's just rounding error that that leads to the difference basically in in these two values. So that's that's basically uh, the end of this problem, and uh, in the next tutorial we'll start tutorial two, two point one, and we'll talk about what happens after the moment starts to exceed the cracking stress and what we'll find is that uh, once once this happens the neutral axis will will shift up and all the concrete below the axis will become completely ineffective so all you have will be the stress in the concrete in the top above the neutral axis and then the tensile steel below the neutral axis. The moment will still increase because what will happen is more of the uh, force it will go into the, into the steel and it will create a, a, result, a couple between the force and the concrete above and, and just the steel by itself below. So that will be for uh, the next tutorial. Alright, uh, so thanks uh, for listening and uh, we'll We'll talk again at 2.1 then.